Hello there Vault Dwellers! Welcome back to Kubrick for another dose of radiation with yet another episode of my Fallout building series. Today we're diving deeper into the heart of our post-apocalyptic masterpiece and starting the next phase of the build which is going to be the interior part of the vault entry and at the same time one of the last stages of making this marvelous build. But of course before we do that we still have some pieces to order and the rock work to make so that is also something we'll take on. Maybe not complete it, but still make a big chunk of the mountain just to have a clear conscience before we venture inside. So it's time to put on the T60 power armor and pop some red eggs because we're in for another radiation filled episode, so let's get started right now. Ok guys, but first things first, as I'm recording this episode, we just got the premiere of the Fallout TV show on Amazon Prime and I wasn't able to watch it all just yet, like probably many of you, so I would like to ask you all to keep the comments section spoiler free, ok? And we have rules about that for a reason. As for now, from the episode I've seen, I have to say that it was worth the wait and I'm really enjoying the feel of the series, so I just can't wait to watch the whole season. But now, let's jump to what's really important here, and that is the progress on the mock. And what I've started with after making the previous episode was of course the rock work. I wanted to make it slightly different than I usually do, meaning using less regular straight slopes and more wedges. The idea came to me that the desert rocks should be a bit smoother than I did for example in my Falcon's Nest mock, so I think that this is a good moment to make that switch. But soon as I started doing that, I quickly realized that I barely have any of the Dark Ten wedges in my collection, so I had to stop the work after placing just a couple of pieces and jump into Bricklink for a quick haul. And I gotta say that this really was a quick one as I got the pieces I've ordered the next day and that is something that I think all of us builders appreciate. So. Let's check out what I got, shall we? First, we got a pair of felt fabric wings I took just out of curiosity to use someday for something, but that is irrelevant, so let's talk wedges. So I got some of the big 3x10 ones in both side variants, a bunch of 2x6 ones which will be crucial for making most of the rocks, and of course some 2x4 ones. Next are some regular slopes to mix with the wedges, like these 3 bricks high slopes and some smaller ones of course. A bunch of inverted slopes as well since I want to make the rocks as irregular as possible and a pair of cut corner bricks. Some normal bricks like these 1x1s and 1x6s, a bag of 2x2 bricks, some different plates brackets, some more 1x4 bricks, a couple of yellow fences and one modified tile since it was the only one that the seller had. So yeah, a pretty decent dark tan hole that should set me up at least for a part of the rockwork going on both sides of the vault that I'm planning for now. Naturally I will need some more of those to finish up the whole thing but we'll worry about that later on because I already cleared out all of the dark tan pieces this seller had and I will need some more for the top, so we'll need to search for another one after I figure out what more elements will I need for the later part of the progress. But now, let's get back to making the rock work with the new wedges and this is what I've envisioned the rocks to look like. The snot wedge technique looks like a good way to make the transition here as the bottom slopes look like some rocks that crumble down over the years and the upper part is looking way smoother like a desert rock face should. So let us move on with this pattern and make the rest of this side. Again using a mix of wedges and slopes with even a small nougat spot in between and I really like how this is going. I covered the top part a bit as well, but as for more of the top I will still have to wait as this will be the last piece of making the landscape 
after I deal with the interior. But as I did the left side, I couldn't just leave the opposite side untouched, so I made more or less the same amount here and I have to say I like this part even more with even bigger nougat spots and some different texture mixes with the wedges and the slopes. So overall the rocks on the sides are now finished but like I said I cannot finish it from the top just yet because the entirety of the inner wall isn't yet made and that will act as a support for the peak of the rocks so maybe let's leave the front for now and let's venture inside the vault. Ok, maybe it doesn't look like a vault just yet, but trust me, it will be for the end of today's episode. And the first thing I need to do here is make the inside wall for which I already prepared all of the segments making up the circular pattern, so what's next is attaching them in place. And this is how it looks all combined. The technique here doesn't differ much from the one outside, with the only difference being the color used and of course the level of destruction. I really wanted to show the difference between the untouched interior of the vault that hasn't been exposed to the outside world for nearly 200 years and the damaged exterior, so the entire inside section will be as clean as it can be and for now I think it's going quite well. Of course the door slides out easily as it was meant to do, but either way I still want the vault to be closed for the final scene, so I left the inside of the wall mostly hollow due to the complicated techniques used, but that's more than enough I think, so let's move on. Now the next step is making the surrounding wall within which the door will operate. I started extending the round pattern and hiding it behind the second layer of a wall, so I had to make sort of a frame to hide the ends, and here I played around with the wall texture as well, just that we don't have a boring plain surface, and below I wanted to make the mechanism loosely inspired both by the TV show and Vault 76, with the movable teeth on the ground that I placed on some chains so they can move the door when it opens, theoretically. Of course, as the door will be fixed in place, the teeth are also connected to the frame, but at least it looks good, right? So let's just see how it should theoretically work, and as everything is now looking as it should, we can move on with the rest of the wall. Okay. Now we have the entire inner wall completed and surrounded from both sides with the frame and I have to admit that it's looking better than I expected. Up till this point I had no idea how I want to approach this part because the vaults I used for inspiration have circular frames and we all know how difficult it is to make round elements with Lego, but I think I managed that quite well. Now all we have left to do here is the top part of the frame but that shouldn't be too hard as I will use the same technique and pattern as below, but placed inverted using probably some snot contraptions. And this is how it looks now. It was actually very easy to attach it all in place, just using that single technic brick from above to connect it to what we already have, and all is just perfect now. Well, maybe besides the lack of few yellow ingots I need to order, but we'll worry about that later. And of course, as you can see, I also made the backside of the door, which in my opinion is more than enough. But still, I will need to remove those stickers and maybe add some mechanical elements like the source material has, but that also we will make later on because now I want to start making the side walls. Here of course, you know me, I didn't want to just have a plain flat wall, so I decided to add some cooling elements like this fan, few pipes for which I of course need to order some more parts, and some other small details just to have it more interesting. This may not be the perfect representation of the game vaults, but like I already said multiple times, I'm just getting inspirations from them and this particular vault 
is just my take on the subject and this look is just down my alley. So now let me just quickly finish the other side with the same pattern as you just saw and then we can jump into the summary of today's progress and the full view as always and I'll talk about how I see the future of this magnificent mock. So guys, having the interior mostly done, we are all set with today's progress. Of course, there are a couple of things more to add here, like for example the catwalk leading to the door, the ceiling and some crates and other detail to spread all around this small portion of the interior, but for that you'll have to wait a bit. And that brings us to the future plans regarding this series. As there is still some work to do and I'm recently dealing with too little time I can spend on actual building as you could see from the delay of this episode, I was thinking of making one more episode in which I will break down the remaining elements of the overall structure like the rest of the interior and finishing the rocks and then for the finale I will only leave the raider camp. Raiders. For now it is still living only in my imagination so that also will probably take a lot of brainstorming and experimenting with different techniques because I of course want to make it all as accurate to the game as possible and that will probably take a lot of time so I don't want to leave you without any updates for a month or so so I hope it's okay with you guys. Of course all that will get clearer in the next weeks so I'm not saying that with complete certainty but for now I think we've covered everything I did in the past weeks. So with all that said, as always I want to hear what you guys think about the current state of the mock so leave your comments under this video and of course like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I will see you all in the next video here on Cube Brick, and until then just remember to keep it bricking.